Insanity, I am the beast that he's cancel me. Granted, he is handsome, handsome with the bread, but underneath, way under feet, I cannot see the soul. Up in the grease, like the holes in the ozone, up in the heat, like holes in the snow globe. You reach a beast, get pro, check the logo. Hey, H, kill haters, call the docs, patience when I'm stuck in pray surveillance. Watch my patience, take your plate right off the table. Tell them, wait here, waiters waiting in my water. Fishy rappers hit the cadence, is it tip when I drop down? You know it's time for prayers. Think I need a moment, man, I'm zoned out. Whoever sees this and subscribes right now will get a free teddy, big stick not included. What's going on, you? YouTube, it's Knox Hill, and we're back with our reaction series. So today, today, man, today, I know the scenery has changed, but it's okay, because it's Friday, and on Fridays, we have more ERB on deck. So you guys know I read the comments, the good, the bad, the ugly, the troll, and there's definitely one that has been the next highest voted that you guys want to see me do. It's time to dive into the battle of the serial killers. I'm talking about Hannibal Lecter versus Jack the Ripper. But before we go any further, guys, I'm going to give a quick shout out to the song in the intro. If you like that, yes, I'm a rapper. There's a good chance. If you like my breakdowns, the way that I think about music, I like my doubles, my triples, my wordplay, my stories. Yeah, you'll probably like my album, Chaos Theory, 20 tracks, blood, sweat, and tears, heart and soul. So if you want to support me and support the channel directly, I will put that link below. But anyways, anyways, we know what we're here for. Hannibal, Jack the Ripper, step up to the plate and see what you got. Ah, already, I love the beat selection. You've got this distortion just eerily sitting way down there with the bass. And then it's almost like a bell toll, but the way that it's been frequenced, I don't know what that sound is exactly, but you know, like setting the nighttime mood and scene. And get the Wheaties boxes out, people. We got two serial killers. Let's go. Wow. Wow. Sorry to stop it before we even start the lyrics, but the face here is amazing for Hannibal Lecter. Check this out. I mean, look at that face. That's only a face a mother would love. You don't want to take that home to your kids. Let's go. Hey, I missed this in my last ERB that we did with Dan Bull, but this is 100% Dan Bull. And I should have known this because I've even been on a track with Dan Bull on a Nerd Out track before. But shout out to Dan Bull, man. Love his voice, love his style, his delivery. He's, yeah, he's a, he's a dope artist. And past, what is it? Past the liquor. It's Jack the Ripper. So Jack the Ripper, that's super clever because to me, he's barring out, right? You get liquor in bars, but also passing the liquor because there is a cocktail and a drink that is named Jack the Ripper. I know it's got whiskey in it. Come on, let me get my bartender on. It's a snobs. It's a whiskey and a snobs. And I can't remember which snobs it is, but yeah. If you never had a Jack the Ripper, next time you go out, as long as you're over 21, get yourself one. Or maybe you're in England and then you can be 18. I'm going off on tangents. Let's keep going. Ripper, Jack the Rapper, following you way before the dawn of Twitter. I'm no. a huge... I mean, Jack the Ripper would stalk his prey, right? And he killed, what was it? He killed five prostitutes over a span of time. And he just had sort of this, you know, dance with police and with the media. And he would send in letters. And then it got to the point where he became so infamous that there were all these false letters that were sent in based on him. But, you know, he would just troll the police, basically, and send body parts of his victims. But he would follow them and stalk them. So on Twitter, what do we do? We follow people. And I love that line that Dawn of Twitter because he's saying I was doing this way before Twitter ever happened. I was following snowflakes and just uh, ending careers left and right. Why do I enjoy violence so much? And this is actual historical violence. Come on, Knox, you're better than this. I miss that too. Following you way before the dawn of Twitter because the dawn Right, he would kill his victims at nighttime in the dark, like in Hyde Park and various places. So right there, the dawn before the rise of Twitter, but also the literal dawn. Man, that's super clever. And then he's a human trigger warning, like bringing back, uh, you know, psychological torment basically. And uh, playing off of Twitter, I take that as well because there are a lot of triggered snowflakes on Twitter too. I'm sorry if you're upset by what I just said, then please get off of mom's iPad or else I am telling on you. 
following you way before the dawn of Twitter. I'm a human trigger warning through the night until the morning. When the light shines upon my crime, you find it sick of pulling an infamous, mm. notorious delinquent. There's little more gory. An infamous, notorious delinquent. I love just the, that adjective choice right there. And to me, delinquent, because he was from Victorian times, so delinquent has obviously a different sort of connotation today, like a juvenile delinquent. But back then, wasn't delinquent more so connotated with being very mentally unstable, being very twisted and sick in the head? Up on my crime, you find it sick of pulling an infamous, notorious delinquent. There's little more gory a thing than living in Victorian England. This Ooh. is horrible. Little more gory a thing than living in Victoria, England. See how he pauses before he delivers the Victoria, England lines? I love that just little pocket that he sat in with the flow. And Victoria, yeah, Victoria, <laughs> Victorian England originated gothic uh, literature, right? What was it called? There's a, it was the Showtime series. And I really enjoyed that series. Penny Dreadful, right? A Penny Dreadful. And you'd pay a penny and it was like just horrorcore fiction basically in writings that you would pay a penny for they were called penny dreadful so yeah i like that i like that Inquid, there's little more gory a thing than living in victoria england this is horrorcore beware if you're a common whore or it... this is horrorcore and there's an ad lib in the back where he goes horrorcore i like that we're catching those whispers dan don't you whisper sweet nothings in my ear and living in victoria england this is horrorcore beware if you're a common whore or at late night you may find me knocking on your door nah. Beware if you're a common whore, because yeah, he went after prostitutes. And then shout out to uh, horrorcore, which is yeah, become a fast growing subgenre. We've got like a horrorcore rap. Shout out to Corpse, who we just did a reaction to. I would describe a little bit of what he does as horrorcore, but yeah, there's some deeper, darker artists than that. That's for sure. Beware if you're a common whore, or at late night you may find me knocking on your door, not keen to leave until I'm knee deep in the door. You grieving family on the knee. Is that, a, is that a guitar muddied back in the mix? Man, this beat is so cool. On your door, not keen to leave until I'm knee deep in Ooh. blood and gore. you grieving family on their knees, we've been scrubbing floors. If the police need a lead, they know what they're looking for. My raps are like the way I eat my meat, bloody raw. Yeah, my raps are like the way I eat meat, bloody raw. And what was it? He had one of his letters, he just uh, wrote it as being from hell. And he described his victim and he attached like half of her what was it, her kidney or liver? Anyways, one of her body parts, right? And he said, well, I ate the other half. You know, I fried it and sauteed it, and it was it was delicious. So, yeah, he, isn't it funny? He's kind of like a Hannibal Lecter, but an actual one. Very twisted. I love the bloody and the raw lines and the gore, and also the police need a lead because he still is unidentified to this day. Hasn't there been speculation that it was this, um, was it a Polish barber? And they even try to do like this reverse forensic psycholo psychology. Come on, Knox, get your words together today. This uh, forensic science, they try to look back on it. I mean, there's been so many theories and speculation on who it actually was. But I think there has been some strong data points now pointing towards it being a man who was originally a suspect during the time. And he was, yeah, he was this uh, barber. So I guess he's like the Sweeney Todd of uh, this story. Deep in blood and gore, you're grieving family on their knees. We've been scrubbing floors. If the police need a lead, they know what they're looking for. My raps are like the way I eat my meat. Bloody raw. Yeah, you're a classic megalomania. You haven't mentioned me once in your entire battle rap. Pity you. Oh, wow. I need to get used to my new camera because I went totally out of frame there. That is a great line. That is the best line so far. I mean, I liked Dan Bull's delivery. I liked his schemes, but I, w I was thinking that. I was literally just about to comment. Man, he hasn't actually, like, dissed Hannibal at all. Isn't this supposed to be a battle? Not just, like, flexing. Like, yeah, you have flex bars in a battle, but you need to fire some shots, too. So I love how Hannibal just took that right away and just flipped it back on him. You're a megalomaniac. Like, you're just so full of yourself. Even in a battle rap, you can't even throw disses out at me. One point to Hannibal. Classic megalomania. You have wow, I mean, look at that. I love his voice, too. You're a classic megalomaniac. Great personality, delivery. I mean, look look at the facial expressions. That shit's going to give me nightmares tonight. Imagine me once in your entire battle rap. Pity your verse wasn't worth a trip in the jacket. Quit jacking off in the track and put the lotion in the basket. And catch what the... <laughs> it puts the lotion in the basket. Or it gets the hose again. That is an amazing way to work that movie line from Silence of the Lambs into his verse and then quit jacking off on the track, playing off of his name, Jack the Ripper. 
I could take it as a double. We're, we're going to give him a bunch for this. Take it as a double for like Mike Jack, right? That's a double. We'll give him a triple, jacking off, ejaculating on the track, like quit that. But obviously that goes even deeper to the, the lotion in the basket. Some of you, uh, we don't want to get into personal lives, but may want to use hand lotion when involving certain actions. Wow. Put the jack, put jacking off in the track and put the lotion in the basket. What the illa serial killer can deliver. Love his just accentuation there. Very put cool. Put the lotion in the basket. What the illa serial killer can deliver. Rhymes finer than the Chianti. I would pair with your liver. Oh, then the Chianti I would pair with your liver. And what was it when um Clarice was trying to like win over Hannibal's trust in the in the films and uh, then. Like the conversation changed and then she tried to psychoanalyze him and he didn't like that. And he basically was talking about the last person who tried to do that, who tried to sort of quantify and objectify him. And uh, yeah, he uh, he basically ate his liver, had it with some beans and a fine candy. That's, a, that's, that's the best Hannibal impression you guys are going to get today, okay? A serial killer can deliver. Rhymes finer than the candy. I would pair with your liver. Just the thought of your putrid flesh. But the thought, when he said but the thought, Behind it was in, was that noise that he makes. Wow, this is there's great depth to this one. Damn. Nice. But the thought of eating your putrid flesh would make me shiver. Um, obviously referenced in Victoria Times, and there were bars before that Dan Bull had. I didn't break down as well of the Victoria Times, you know, because it was life expectancy was so much shorter you know they didn't have the same regulations of sanitation in things so i love that like the putrid flesh making fun of sort of your historical period that you came up in and isn't there something deeper with like the piss the hell was it i think it was something like wasn't it they used like some piss to to clean and make things more sterile I don't know. Your flesh makes me want to shiver. Cause your British body's covered in more piss than kitty litter. You stabbed women when they wouldn't give you a... Oh, and kitty litter. Right, kitty playing off a of female. Female parts, pussy, kitty. That's nice. Cause your British body's covered in more piss than kitty litter. You stabbed women when they wouldn't give you attention. Like Ooh. a penny dreadful version of OJ Simpson. But the... <sighs> this is so good. I love the attacks in this one. Yeah, I mean, Hannibal is very quickly running away with this right now just because he's actually dissing him. But like a Penny Dreadful version, and we talked about what a Penny Dreadful was, right? Super clever. But then also, there was a series, Penny Dreadful. Again, I'm going to shout out that series. It is a really good series. The acting is good. I love the story. It was only three seasons, though. And that, I wish it was longer. But the thing is, then you have like Game of Thrones that just felt dragged out. Like sometimes it is good to take something that's really, really good and just, you know, end it. End a story for once. Don't do like the U.S. does all the time. And so many times with shows, we just, uh, yeah, we just kill it. We drag the office into God knows how many seasons. I'm really going off on tangents today. By the way, sexy chicken time. Get your merchandise. Knoxhillmusic.com. Wouldn't give you attention like a penny dreadful version of O.J. Simpson. And then obviously the O.J. Simpson lines because he murdered his wife at the time. Because he thought that she was having an affair. So playing off of that, playing off of Girls Won't Give You Attention because Jack the Ripper only murdered females, only murdered whores. And isn't it ironic that whores who you pay for to have sexual intercourse with, he still couldn't get their attention? And when they wouldn't give you attention, like a petty dreadful version of O.J. Simpson. But these days your nickname is all that's even known. And you didn't even come up with that shit on your own. I'm real. Wow, your nickname is all that's even known. Because we still, again, we still don't know who Jack the Ripper is. And... That one letter, though, when he first signed it as Jack the Ripper, hasn't it been speculated or shown that it was actually him? But anyways, uh, there's there's a lot of misinformation in the Jack the Ripper tales. But basically, the, the story goes is that, you know, the media was obviously selling a ton of newspapers. I mean, it was all over the headlines and the press, and it, they were just running away with it. And, the, you know, the Gothic Times, the Penny Dreadfuls, the love of horrorcore, and it's like this fascination with the the macabre in real life really so yeah there's a huge playoff of that but basically like the media made jack the ripper gave him his name gave him that name is all that's even known and you didn't even come up with that shit on your own i'm real you'll find me making vacancies in brothel no I, i'm real i swear i'm real i'm a real boy you didn't even come up with that shit
it on your own. I'm real. You'll find me making vacancies in brothels. Mm. Well, you only exist inside the pages of a novel. I love those those screams, man. They're haunting in the background. And you only exist in the pages of a novel. I'm real. Your ass is fake. You'll find me making vacancies in brothels. Well, you only exist inside the pages of a novel. Nice flip. You were kept for ages in the hovel. Contained within a cage behind a locked door. Well, I never got caught. So who's the superior serial killer, Dr. Lecter? Ah, that's great alliteration. Who's the superior serial killer, Dr. Lecter? You know, you've been locked up the whole time. I still never got caught. See, again, he's flexing. But this time I like the flex because... He's taking Hannibal's lines, using it to flip it on Hannibal while still flexing. That's a better way to handle this battle. I like that. Oh, no, 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 no. One more time. Let's bring that back. I mean, Dexter is a good show. It has been vilified for the way that it has ended things with that finale, but... Yeah, Dexter, Hannibal, okay? People enjoy Dexter more nowadays. I like that. Okay, okay. All right, you get points. You get points, Dan. Oh, and I missed that line, too. What a great line. I'm still wanted. He is still wanted to this day because he never got caught. Wow. Ah. Uh. Fuck the 7-7 seven, seven bombers. I like how he puts up, you know, the British sort of fuck you. But wow, that just, that took a random turn. But I'll, obviously playing off of the terrorizing London. Because, he, yeah, he was, I guess you could argue, he was sort of like a terrorist in those times. Just creating creating fear and panic. But 7-7 seven, seven bombers, man. I mean, that was awful. The the suicide bombers that bombed uh, the, the tube in London. And also one of the double-decker buses was bombed as well. Yeah, just absolutely horrific. But interesting time to bring that up. Strange. From the hell of spread upon us, I'm terrorizing London. Fuck the 7-7 seven, seven bombers. No, no, Jack, you are doing fine. Before your ham-fisted attempt at a terrorist line. How typical of Jack. The rebuttals in the first set of bars from Hannibal are just battle winners right then and there. Again, I pointed it out before we got there. He obviously took that as an opening, an opportunity, and flipped it. I do feel like sometimes they, they have to be writing these together because sometimes they'll they'll sort of throw away lines that they know that the other one can flip just to have a better sort of battle chemistry and keep the story moving. You are doing fine for your ham-fisted attempt at a terrorist line. And ham-fisted. When I talked about Clarice trying to win over uh, Hannibal Lecter's trust, and uh, what does Anthony Hopkins say? I can't remember, but he says something about a ham-fisted attempt as well. So again, we got more movie references just caked into the lyrics. How typical of Jack the Ripper to chase a headlock. Pick rarely Otis Bray. Ask him how I get mine. I'm the boom vey from the violence. I like some... <sighs> One of the most memorable and horrific scenes from the movie Hannibal now. We're moving off of Silence of the Lambs. Uh, Ray Liotta was playing the, the agent who uh, Hannibal just, yeah, cut his brain open and dined off of that. Had a little bit of a lemon and pepper sprinkled on top oh, also picking someone's brain that's an idiom you know when you're trying to uh yeah just understand a way of thinking or get advice from someone you pick their brain that's nice man so he's literally picking a brain but also the saying picking someone's brain that attempt that a terrorist lie how typical of jack the ripper to chase a headline pick rarely Otis brain and ask him how i get mine i'm the boy Ask him how I get mine because I'm eating his brain to get my brain. Typical of Jack the Ripper to chase. There's so much to unpack in this. Wow, how long is this going to be? Oh my goodness. So chasing a headline with Jack the Ripper. Because again, he just always was sending letters to the media, to the police, to Scotland Yard. So he wanted that attention, right? Hannibal Lecter's like, I don't, I don't need that attention. I just enjoy, you know, the finer things of eating people's brains. Jack the Ripper to chase a headline. Pick rarely Otis Bray. Ask him how I get mine. I'm the bon vivant of violence. A licensed psychiatrist who dies. The bon vivant of violence. You know, he's up. I love how he puts that. That's really, really good writing right there, you know, because he's like high society, isn't he? He's got finer tastes. The Otis Bray. Ask him how I get mine. I'm the bon vivant of violence. A licensed psychiatrist. And yeah, he was a licensed psychiatrist too, because that's why he first was brought into Silence of the Lambs to try to catch Buffalo Bill, the serial killer. 
oh, that's ironic. Dines on high society because high society going out and dining, but he's actually dining on them, the members of high society. Wow, this this is good. My this is real good. I gross both your balls and my hubba. But for a serial killer, you're as tasteless as a bowl of kashi. You pray in a It's over. I mean, it's over. Damn Bull's a really good rapper too, but this is just I feel like it's easier for No, it should have been easier for Jack the Ripper, surely, because there's more that we know about Hannibal than we do about Jack the Ripper. But some of these flips, man, obviously we got to have roasting your balls on Japanese abachi, you know, chopping that up. That's quite the visual. But the line that really got me was that clever double on serial killer as tasteless as a bowl of your balls I have a serial killer, you're as tasteless as a as bowl, a bowl of, of kashi. kashi. I mean, come on, that's so clever. Serial killer, someone who kills multiple times, multiple victims, but also cereal, like a bowl of cereal. Kashi, a type of cereal, a tasteless sort of cereal. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not delicious. Let's put it that way. Both, both your balls and I have but for a serial killer, you're as tasteless as a bowl of kashi. You pray on a prostitute and play with her body. Mm. Oh, mine, that's your naughty jack. I hate that you're sloppy. Barney, take me back to solitary confinement. I don't mind that you're naughty. I hate that you're sloppy because I am a true refined serial killer. Oh, that hit hard. I that you're naughty, Jack. I hate that you're sloppy. Barney, take me back to solitary confinement. Because this dirty them lamb has just been silenced. Who won? Who's done? You decide! What a great beat, man. Okay, hang on. <laughs> Directed by Nice Peter. So damn bull. Oh, Epic Lloyd. Ah, Epic Lloyd. Man, he was a great Hannibal. Yeah, I mean, this beat with some of the bass distortions and then the way some of those drum kits kicked in, it was like sort of rock type of drums, like heavy percussion would kick in with that guitar, man. Wow, that was a ride. And obviously those last lines, right? This lamb has been silenced, playing off the silence of the lambs. Jack is just a little lamb, basically, that has now been taken to slaughter and ended. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was... Uh, in terms of the chemistry and the setups, I really like how that battle flowed. I felt like Dan gave some stuff away to set Jack up just to make the punchlines hit heavier. But, I mean, obviously, from the acting to the delivery to the voice to the just personal attacks, you got to give this one to Sexy Chicken. New merchandise, noxomusic.com. Also, I'm giving it to Hannibal. So, if you guys liked today's video, if you did, be sure to smash that like button. Comment down below any other ERBs you want to see me do or if there's other artists you want to see me check out. I try to read all of your comments, guys. I respond as much as I can, so please keep commenting and keep posting. Also, this is your reminder that tomorrow we live stream at 1 p.m. EST. So, stay tuned for that. It's always a great energy and great time, man. Also, also, if you're here at the end of this video, do me a favor. Support the channel directly. Subscribe and notifications on. As always, this is your reminder to stay safe, to stay positive. It's Noxil. I'll catch you again soon. I'm out.